So we are way up in the mountains today and we've got this 175 here that, well, when I turn the ignition switch, nothing. There's absolutely no power anywhere to the front of the machine. And well, I guess we're gonna start with the easy stuff. Let's, let's check the battery. I know I didn't drive this far for it to be that easy, but let's see, we'll get our multimeter and check it out. There's been a lot of times I'll go on these no start issues and it's sometimes it's a battery uh, battery cable issue i know my little brother makes fun of me says that most of my service calls are changing air filters and tightening battery cables and i can't say that he's wrong because we were 12.2 on this battery let's just double check the cables itself 12.2 check over to the starter or 12.2 now this has what we call a mega fuse um, between right above the battery here. It's kind of under a cover that we got to pop off. And I guess a lot of people don't realize that this fuse is here. So it's not just the fuses in the main panel up front, but pretty much everything after G series has this mega fuse. Oh, if I can get it off, got the cap off. Um, I say mega fuse, it's a, yeah, big, I think these are a hundred amp fuse, I believe, but this is where the main power comes from. The battery goes through this fuse first and then to the front of the machine. So, uh, well, I'm trying to get good connection. So it does say that I have 12 volts on that side of the fuse. But just to make sure, I'm gonna go turn the key on and that'll put a draw on the system and just make sure with the ignition on, we still have 12 volts across that fuse. Again, we're gonna check it on the battery terminal. Okay, I do have it, so 12.2 uh, going across the main fuse. So um, that tells me we should have power going up to the front of the machine. So let's just keep checking fuses and relays up front. Guess we have our main fuse panel underneath the seat here. using a little half inch socket we can uh, pull that cover off and see what we got what would make sense here we got computer at the bottom attachment unswitched power so that's kind of the one I want to look at is unswitched power I'm just gonna visually check these at the moment and maybe the computer fuse. Yeah, it looks good. And then we've got a switched power relay. Let's just swap it with another relay. The odds of two relays being bad next to each other, I guess it could happen, but no. Nope. Okay, now let's just check the, some fuses for actual power. Sometimes finding a good ground to do this can be a little difficult but let's just see if we got power going into our fuse box here okay and it looks like i do have power into the fuse box so i know i've got 12.2 volts now up to the fuse box but when i turn the key still nothing so there may be some issues underneath the cab, so I've got to get the cab lifted up now. This is just my process of troubleshooting. Um, I could back feed power into one of these relays, like to the switch power relay, and see if the computer and stuff would turn on. That might be a good idea, maybe try that. But um, first what I'm gonna do is just get the cab up and see if I see anything obvious. I'm just looking for something obvious that would, you know, a rubbed wire, broken wire or something, so. 
Let's take a minute and get this cab up. So I'm gonna dive in here and what I've done is I've left the ignition switch in the on position. And that way if I wiggle something or move a wire and it comes on, it kind of gets me close to where that problem might be. Sometimes it's not that easy, but we're gonna start with the easy stuff because sometimes it is just that easy. So I've gone through the whole machine so far. I've looked at all the normal uh, spots where we would find rubbed wires, you know, did all the wiggle test and all that with the ignition on and it's never lit up. You know, I've, I've never got any beeps or nothing. I even jumped that switch power relay and I've got voltage on both sides of the relay and nothing happens. It's almost like the controller itself might be dead, but this is like an upgraded controller. So it's, it's kind of rare. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back probe a few spots. You know, we don't wanna unplug these connections and check for power because sometimes that'll give you a false reading. We need to check that stuff under a load. So I'm just gonna start back probing some of the, uh, the ignition wires. I mean, I don't think it's an ignition switch issue because like I said, I, I jumped the um, switch power relay and still got nothing out of it. So it tells me it's probably not an ignition thing. Well, I say that, but I can't get any power to my ignition switch or through my meter. I mean, sometimes back probing is not an exact science, but I'm gonna check this side of the controller as well and see if, yeah, so I'm not getting anything. So it's almost like we don't have power coming up into the cab. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to back feed 12 volts, you know, through the ignition wire, you know, just bring the, the, the cab um, harness up to, I guess, bring it live and see if the panels will turn on. So I'm going to go grab a jumper wire and we're just going to go kind of straight to battery and up here to the ignition switch because I'm checking those wires and I'm not getting any, any voltage up here. But it's odd that I can jump the switch power relay and that doesn't do anything down there. Well, unless there's no power going to the cab. So let's go get a jumper wire. So now I've got a 12 volts coming straight from my battery. Yep, and the panels turn on. I heard the relays click, everything's lit up. So like I said, I'm back feeding 12 volts, but I've got 12 volts down in my fuse box, but for some reason it's not making it up into the cab. Let's just see if it'll start and run. So that almost seems like a dead battery. Let me, uh... Yeah, so although I'm showing 12.2 on the battery, 12.2 everywhere. It seems like maybe the battery's got a bad cell in it. That's where I'm gonna put my jump box on the battery and see what happens. So now I've got my jump box on it. Let's see if we can get this to start up. Well, that is smoking which tells me that the fuel shutoff solenoid is clicking on or it wouldn't be smoking like that. We'll let this glow plug count down again because it is, it's about 35 degrees up here this morning. Okay, still nothing, but I think we've got, now that I'm back feeding, everything is working. Um, with my jump box on there, but if I take my jumper wire off, I still lose all connection even with the jump box on there. So there's still something wrong between the fuse panel 
and up here in the cab. So we're gonna have to raise the cab back up or we might start here and uh, look for a break in the wire. I don't know, sometimes these can be tough. You know, sometimes we go right to it and sometimes we have to tear the whole cab apart. So I killed my jump box. Um, I'm too far away from the machine. I can't get my truck over here close enough with the jumper cables. Um, so I guess I'm gonna have to charge my jump box and we'll just get in here and start tracing this wiring, you know, from the cab down and see what we can find. And that, that battery's just too dead. There's not really any power out here. Yeah, this ought to be interesting. All right, so while, while I'm recharging my um, battery pack, what I'm using is power probe. This is like a circuit tracer. It'll show us opens and shorts. Um, I've got it hooked up to our ignition wire where I need power, but I do not. And of course it does show that it is an open circuit. And what we do is we use this little transmitter here. So when we get close to, you know, the wire here where it's sending the signal, it gives us a signal saying that, okay, it knows that that wire, it'll trace that wire all the way through the system. See, I can trace it through here. I know I've got power and I can trace it back. So really this, this system is a love and a dead gum I hate you type system because sometimes, well, number one, it's, it's not very easy to use when harnesses are going through all these panels and fenders and all that crap. But what I've done is I traced it all the way back to back here, you know, in the back corner. And this is where our wire is coming up, you know, from underneath the machine into the cab. So I'm tracing it down here and I lose it. I got it right there, but nothing down here. Up here and I lose it down here. So it's almost like there's something right inside here and almost looks like maybe there's a splice right here, but there's no rubbed wires or anything in there. So I'm gonna cut this open, which I don't like doing because I'm still wiggling it all around. I'm still not getting any power to the cab. So, but according to our circuit tester, this is where my problem is. So let's cut it open and see what we find. Part of the reason this is such a love-hate relationship, you know, I can come back here, we've got power into our wire. You know, I cut out this whole wiring insulation here, but a second ago I could wiggle this wire and I would lose that signal. Aha. Let's see how I can we can hear the tone <laughs> but it's not consistent that's crazy <laughs> so now we're getting a different tone it's almost like kind of a smushed spot here in the harness but So I don't know, I guess I'm gonna cut this part open right here. See, I don't know, this thing can just run you all over the damn place, but, so I mean, this does look like a weak spot right here, so I'm gonna cut that open and see if we find anything in there. So that damn tool had me chasing false signals all through the cab. It's like, it would go down the harness and then it would 
stops. You would think it was right there and I'd cut the harness back and then it'd start working. It was a real intermittent issue. And I think as I was moving the harness, maybe it was getting tiny connection, but I don't know. I've checked everything. I finally found it. Let's take a look at what we got. So we crawl in here. Oh, right there. So that was tucked underneath the frame right there under that danger sticker. And we can see where that just rubbed right through right there. So that's our power to the, uh, to the instrument panel. So let's get that cut open, get that fixed and <laughs> get everything in the cab taped back up and put together that I pulled apart. So it kind of depends on the situation. I know I've done videos where I solder these wires, but, um, Again, not everybody likes solder because they say that it'll vibrate and then it will, um, you know, break the connection. So really, a crimped connection is better, but I hate those heat shrink crimp connections. What I use is non-insulated butt connectors. It just looks a lot more professional. <laughs> and it doesn't make the harness real bulky. See, I've got plenty of wire here, non-insulated butt connector, a little heat shrink. Now we can hear the cab, we can hear little beeps and stuff in there because I did leave the key on. So we do know that this is our definitely our problem. Okay, and see that lays really nicely back in line with the rest of the harness. So that's why I like to do that. They're just not real intrusive. They're just nice and small and tight. Yeah, we're still talking about the wiring harness. And then we are going to tape this harness up using harness tape. One of my favorites is Tessa tape. And I am going to have to cut this little zip tie here to get it out. Yeah, you know, if, if when you're doing electrical repairs on heavy equipment and you're doing it with electrical tape, just don't let anybody find out that it was you. <laughs> Go to your toolbox. I mean, okay, electrical tape has its place, but not in these machines. Um, so, yeah, if you, if you rely on electrical tape for these harness repairs, go to your toolbox and just throw it away or take it home, give it to your electrician buddy or... What me and my son use it for is what we call mandates. So when we cut ourselves, we take the electrical tape because it's really good because it's more flexible, and we just take a paper towel, wrap our finger up in it, and uh, wrap it up with electrical tape. But other than that, I think it's useless. Get yourself some good Tessa harness tape with some non-insulated butt connectors and some heat shrink. You know what? I'll leave um, links in the description for all that stuff but it just gives you a much more professional and better looking, longer lasting repair. So now I've just gotta get this machine all put back together. My jump box is pretty much charged now because it did take me a while to find that. Because th that's what I was looking for at first. There's usually something obvious but for some reason, I didn't see that. It was just tucked way under the frame well where it went around, so we had to kind of cut it out and pull it out. But eventually, we did find a problem. No thanks to our power probe circuit tracer. That thing, God have mercy. Pardon my language. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching.